Greetings of the day to all of you. Uh, we continue our lecture series on uh, non-isolated DC to DC converters. This is relevant for uh, both bachelor's and master's courses uh, on advanced power electronics and applied power electronics respectively. Till now we have discussed the buck converter circuit and the boost converter circuit in detail and I have uh, shared some questions on the same with you on your WhatsApp group. And we now move on to discussion on buck boost converter. So I'm sure uh, you are already aware from your previous courses on power electronics that a buck boost converter essentially gives you both buck operation as well as boost operations. So output voltages uh, are either less than or greater than uh, equal to the input uh, voltages so it's a more dynamic converter in terms of its uh, capabilities that it can step down as well as step up dc voltages mm, as uh, the name clearly suggests uh, as far as its applications are concerned uh, mostly dc to dc converters like i've already discussed are used in switch mode power supplies or uh, charging of batteries electric vehicles uh, uh, renewable integration to the grid solar energy conversion systems and uh, etc so uh, bug boost converter again uh, has the same kind of applications it's just when whenever you need step up as well as step down um, control that's when you would ideally desire to use a bug boost converter now let's uh, quickly see the circuit diagram you have an input voltage dc source like the bug converter it can be directly sampled through a switch and now uh, there is a shunt inductance in which energy is stored from the DC supply through the switch into this inductance and when this inductance uh, you know it releases energy see if it will store energy I don't want you to actually remember circuits to be very honest but uh, there is an intuitive way of making power electronic circuits say I'll tell you when you when you remember this part that it's like a buck converter and then um, the difference lies in having directly storing energy in an inductor through uh, this switch so when you store energy the inductor will store energy like this and when you release uh, when you switch off the uh, device the inductor voltage is bound to switch so when the inductor voltage switches it is uh, it has to forward bias a diode so it is obvious that the diode has to be uh, you know either like this either here or it has to be if you want it on the top side of the circuit then it has to be connected like this because only then will will the inductor forward bias that diode so the diode over here in a bug boost converter is connected in the reverse direction instead of con uh, connecting it in the forward direction so something like this and then you have a capacitor across the load so this is your bug boost converter circuit now uh, we'll start with a simple analysis of the converter circuit using volt second balance so i will assume that the inductor voltage uh, is defined like this uh, the source voltage is here and the load voltage like we conventionally define it the positive terminal on the upper upper side and the negative terminal on the lower side so this is how we have defined the load voltage we have components l and c which will we will design later on in the uh, lecture and we have the switch s and the freewheeling diode d now uh, we already know that the switching device which is an igbt or a mosfet most likely a mosfet is uh, given pulses at uh, a fixed switching frequency and uh, whenever the pulse is high that is zero to dts where d is a ratio of turn on time upon, upon the total switching interval so zero to dts it is an energy storage interval and the switch begins to conduct because it is uh, given a gate emitter pulse as a result of which uh, the inductor gets directly connected across the input dc voltage and it starts storing energy now the output over here this positive terminal is over here so it's reverse biasing the diode so the diode is open circuited a classic behavior of dc to dc converters where diodes uh, operate complementary to the main device so whenever the main device conducts the diode is essentially off and then you have 
the capacitor connected across the load. So interesting thing again that the capacitor will ensure that the load is never really deprived of energy. So you have a continuous output um, and the inductor is storing energy. So voltage across the inductor at this time is um, equal to VDC. The inductor is storing energy, so the inductor current is rising. Uh, the capacitor is actually releasing energy. And if you write an equation for the capacitor current, IC, and if you define I0 like this, so IC is equal to minus of I0 in this interval because capacitor current is uh, flowing in the opposite direction, so the capacitor is discharging. Uh, if we look at the switch, uh, it is... Let's see the voltage across the switch. The voltage across the switch right now is zero because it is uh, conducting, ideally zero. And let's see the voltage across the freewheeling diode, Vd. The diode is connected in the reverse direction, so keep that in mind. Now, if we write uh, KVL for the whole loop, we have input voltage Vdc plus voltage across the diode VD because the diode is connected in reverse so you're adding them up uh, is equal to V0. So VD, the voltage across the diode is V0 minus VDC. So VD is equal to V0 minus of VDC. So these are expressions for uh, uh, different parameters or different variables during the energy storage interval. Now uh, at DTS the pulse to the de uh, device is withdrawn. So from DTS to TS is the interval when the inductor has to release the energy that it had previously stored. Now you have withdrawn the gating pulse to the device. The inductor voltage is bound to switch. So the inductor voltage switches like this. In this process it dumps energy into the capacitor so if you observe it even this this circuit is going to tell you that the capacitor potential actually builds up in this direction and then it also delivers some energy into the load again in the reverse direction because that's how the return path uh, is provided that's how the inductor is actually releasing energy and then it is forward biasing this diode which is connected in the opposite direction and the circuit is complete. So if we see for this interval the voltage across the inductor, let me use only one convention. We know it has switched but let me use this convention to write the equation. So the inductor is directly connected across the load so we have VL is equal to V0. The inductor is releasing energy so the inductor current is falling. The capacitor current over here is equal to inductor current minus the load current because this is the inductor current and minus the load current makes the capacitor current. And uh, what else? And uh, the voltage across the switch, the voltage across the diode is, e is equal to zero because the diode is conducting. And voltage across the switch. Now the switch is connected like this. So you have VDC is equal to voltage across the switch plus voltage across the load. So voltage across the switch is equal to VDC minus V0. Voltage across the diode was V0 minus VDC and voltage across the switch is VDC minus V0. So let me just, you know, uh, delete the circuits and, you know, integrate all this information that we have derived till now. In the first interval, I have the inductor voltage equal to VDC. And in the second interval, it is equal to V0. Uh, the inductor current is obviously rising first. And then it is falling because the inductor is storing and then releasing energy. The voltage across the switch is zero at first. And then it is... Um, VDC minus V0. The voltage across the diode is V0 minus VDC at first and then it is 0. Uh, 
the capacitor current is minus I naught in the first interval and then I L minus I naught in the next interval. Now, in order to analyze this circuit, let's use our same old tool that is the volt second balance, which ensures that the inductor releases as much energy as it had stored. So initially the voltage across the capacitor, so the inductor was VDC and the interval duration was DTS. Then the voltage across the inductor is V0 and the interval duration is TS minus DTS. The whole sum should be zero. This essentially means the volt second balance uh, indirectly means that there is no net change in the inductor current. Yani ki agar inductor current pehle rise hui, jitni rise hui, utni hi baad mein fall hui. That means that the state of energy of the inductor remained constant. So uh, we have already discussed it uh, in previous lectures through LDI by dt is equal to uh, voltage across the inductor I had br briefly explained it to you so uh, this is the volt second balance let's solve it further we have is equal to zero so v naught is equal to minus times dvdc upon one minus d now an interesting thing over here is that there is a minus sign and this minus sign tells you that if you have used this as a convention for your voltage, output voltage, that's a wrong convention. Your output is actually going to develop in the reverse direction. So if you have 5 volts input and you want to buck or boost it, whatever, the output will develop in the reverse direction. This is what your minus sign is indicating over here. And even this year, you have deduced this mathematically. You also know it physically when your inductor was releasing energy, it was dumping energy into the capacitor in this direction instead of the other direction and obviously feeding the load also in this direction and then forward biasing the diode so basically the uh, uh, the direction of currents is reversed on the on the right hand side of the circuit so this is also mathematically deduced from the minus sign over here now uh, if we analyze this equation uh, mathematically if you have duty ratios say uh, zero at d is equal to zero the output voltage of the converter is going to be zero at d equal to say 0.5 the output voltage of the converter is going to be uh, VDC minus VDC of course and at D is equal to 1 the output voltage of the converter is going to be theoretically infinite theoretically infinite so if you plot this curve you're going to basically plot it in terms of the duty ratio and let's just plot its magnitude because the direction is negative. So if we, if we plot the magnitude of V0 with respect to the duty ratio D, at D equal to 0, it is 0. And then at D equal to 0.5, it is equal to VDC. And then it is increasing like this. It's not a linear curve, something like this. It's something like this. So it tends to infinity at d equal to 1 for an ideal buck boost converter. Yaniki for duty ratios between 0 to 0 0.5, you are getting buck operation. And for duty ratios between 0 0.5 to 1, you are getting boost operation. Which essentially means that your converter is a buck boost converter. Depending upon the choice of your duty ratio, you can either step down your input or you can step it up as per your application. So this was about your output voltage and its response. Now let's move on to uh, an interesting relationship between the currents in the circuit, which we will arrive at using the capacitor current second balance. So let's move on to the capacitor current second balance, which is the same thing as a volt second balance for an inductor, a dual uh, response to that for a capacitor. And if we apply the current second balance to a capacitor, it means that we are ensuring that a in a complete switching cycle, the capacitor has neither uh, had any net addition nor a net you know, deliverance of energy. Its net energy has remained constant. It has charged and discharged, but its state of energy has remained um, constant after one particular switching cycle. So net change in voltage is zero. That is a current second balance 
dictated by C dV by dt is equal to I. Now, uh, in the first interval, the capacitor current was uh, minus of I naught. So you have minus of I naught in the interval dTS. And then in the second interval, it was I L minus I naught, which is 1 minus d times ts and this is equal to 0 right now uh, if i solve this this is minus d i naught plus i l minus i naught minus d i l plus d i naught is equal to 0 so i have i l is equal to um, i naught upon 1 minus d so if this is your load current, then your inductor current is basically a boosted version of your load current. See, uh, your buck boost relation is D upon 1 minus D, but 1 upon uh, 1 minus D is basically a boosting relationship. Yani ki aap chahe buck mode mein operate karo, duty ratio less than 0.5 low ya boost mode mein operate karo duty ratio uh, greater than 0.5 low when you check in terms of the current this inductor current will always be a boosted version of the load current right and this if you see this inductor current ye aapko inductor current ki relationship mili you did not get a relationship for source current Right? You, did, you have not received a uh, relationship for source current. If you have source current ke terms, mein relationship hai, there are many ways of seeing it. One way would be to uh, simply apply the power balance. We are talking about an ideal bug, bug boost converter. So if the input power will be equal to the output power, let me call the source current as IDC. So VDC IDC will be equal to V0 I0. And V0 is VDC times D into 1 minus D. We are talking in terms of magnitude, so I am neglecting the minus sign. And this is equal to I0 and this is VDC, IDC. So VDC, VDC goes and IDC is D upon 1 minus D times I0. Makes sense ki jitne or voltage mein reverse relationship hai in terms of magnitudes. यानी कि अगर आपने इनपुट वोल्टेज को बक करके स्टेप डाउन करके आउटपुट वोल्टेज जनरेट की तो जो इनपुट करंट होगी वो आपकी स्टेप डाउन वर्जन ऑफ आउटपुट होगी मेक्स सेंस और इफ यू आर बूस्टिंग योर आउटपुट वोल्टेज यू आर आल्सो बूस्टिंग योर इनपुट करंट सो दैट द पावर बैलेंस इज मेंटेनड बट द सेम डज नॉट होल्ड फॉर द इंडक्टर करंट इट इज ऑलवेज अ बूस्टेड वर्जन ऑफ योर लोड करंट इन फैक्ट आप इस रिलेशनशिप को d अपॉन वन माइनस डी आई नॉट इस रिलेशनशिप को पावर बैलेंस के बगैर भी निकाल सकते हो इफ यू अज्यूम इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी दैट आई डिस्कस दिस बट इज जस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग आई सो लेट मी जस्ट डिस्कस इट एनी वे मैं ये भी कह सकती हूँ कि जो आई डी सी है वो उसका वेव फॉर्म कैसा होगा वो आई एल के ही बराबर होगी जीरो टू डी टी एस में जो जैसी भी आई एल होगी क्योंकि स्विच कंडक्ट कर रहा होगा सो दिस इज योर सर्किट आई एल इज इक्वल टू आई डी सी जीरो से डी टी एस तक और डी टी एस के बाद डी टी एस टू टी एस वाले इंटरवल में द स्विच इज ऑफ सो द करंट इज जीरो योर सोर्स करंट इज डिसकंटिन्यूस इफ यू सी दिस बक कन्वर्टर में भी आपकी सोर्स करंट डिसकंटिन्यूस हो जाती है क्योंकि सोर्स के बिल्कुल सीरीज में आपका स्विच लगा होता है और बक बूस्ट कन्वर्टर में भी आपकी सोर्स करंट डिसकंटिन्यूस होती है इट्स अनडिजायरेबल बिकॉज योर सोर्स इज कोई प्योर डीसी यू वांट अ प्योर डीसी करंट टू टू फ्लो थ्रू द सोर्स समथिंग लाइक दिस अ पल्स्ड करंट और अ करंट हैविंग दिस काइंड ऑफ अ वेव फॉर्म व्हिच इज नॉट प्योर डीसी कैन डैमेज योर सोर्स आल्सो सो बक कन्वर्टर एंड बक बूस्ट कन्वर्टर्स डोंट हैव द बेस्ट काइंड ऑफ सोर्स करंट्स ऑल्दो बूस्ट कन्वर्टर जो होता है उसके सीरीज में देर इज एन इंडक्टर एंड बूस्ट करंट की जो सोर्स करंट होती है दैट्स एसेंशियली द इंडक्टर करंट एंड दैट्स फ्लैट दैट्स दैट्स दैट डजेंट गेट डिसकंटिन्यूस तो बूस्ट कन्वर्टर की सोर्स करंट जो होती है वो कंटिन्यूस होती है ओके कमिंग बैक टू बग बूस्ट कन्वर्टर इफ दिस इज अ वे फॉर्म ऑफ योर सोर्स करंट यू कैन जस्ट सिंपली से दैट द एवरेज आई डी सी विल बी इक्वल टू वन अपॉन टी एस इंटेग्रल जीरो टू डी टी एस आई एल डी टी राइट so you can call it d times i l or d times i l kiske barabar hai just use this relationship it is d i not upon 1 minus d 
the same relationship that you got for IDC from the input output power balance. So basically, there are many ways of approaching it. But, you know, when you're correct, then always culminate at the same thing. So this was about the source current, uh, computation of the source current. Now we'll quickly draw uh, waveforms for this circuit. In continuous conduction mode. So CCM for buck boost converter, different waveforms. Assuming I have a fixed input DC voltage source and I'm giving pulses to it at any uh, duty ratio DTS. So the pulse is high for zero to DTS and then it becomes low and then the same thing repeats. Okay. Now this is your uh, pulse between the gate source terminals of the MOSFET. Let's start with waveform for inductor voltage VL. In the first interval, the inductor voltage was VDC. In the second interval, it was V0. But V0 itself is negative. So this is how V0 will look like. And hence, this area is equal to this area. If inductor voltage is positive in first interval, it has to be negative in the other interval for the inductor to release this energy. And these areas will be equal as per the volt second balance. So this is VDC and this is V0. Now, if we draw a waveform for inductor current, it is rising in the first interval, then falling in the other interval, rising and falling. What else? If we draw a waveform for voltage across the diode, the voltage across the diode in the first interval was, I need to redraw the circuit to see it. So this was my switch was conducting and the diode was connected like this. So this is VDC plus V diode is equal to V naught. So voltage across the diode was V naught minus VDC. Now V naught minus VDC. Ab VDC is fixed, but V naught jo hai, ye khud negative. Hai. So if this is negative, if V0 is negative, then obviously I can write it as minus of mod of V0. Right? Minus VDC. Or minus mod of V0 plus VDC. Yani ki, aapka jo device hai that is actually getting stressed. To, jo magnitude hai uska, uspe output or input ka total sum uh, uspe stress ho raha hai. Jaysay agar hum buck converter ki baat karte, usme sirf input ki stress aati thi device pe. Boost converter ki baat karte, to output ka stress aata hai device pe, V0. Or buck boost converter ki baat karo, to aapki device pe V0 plus VDC. Obviously with a negative sign because diodes can block only negative voltages. But you have a double stress on, not exactly double, I mean, the stress of the output as well as the input on your device. So your device, you're getting a benefit that you can get buck as well as boost operation. But the devices used in a buck boost converter will have to be rated at very high voltages because your device is stressed to a larger extent. So pehle interval mein aapke device ke across voltage aati hai minus V0 plus VDC like this or dusre interval mein the diode is conducting so obviously this voltage is zero this was about the diode then let's uh, see voltage across the switch in the first interval the switch was conducting in the second interval now dc to dc converters mein jo aap device use karte ho they're supposed to block positive voltages so if you see aapne jab device voltage nikali hoti that was vdc minus v0 or V0 itself, you know it is negative because you have taken convention. Hi galat liya tha. So VDC minus minus of mod of V0. So this is VDC plus V0. Mod of V0, of course. Magnitude of V0. So your device has to block positive voltage. Hi block karna hai. Jaise MOSFET hai, it can block only positive voltages. So you have VDC 
plus V naught. In the second half interval when the diode is conducting and the switch is not conducting. Any other waveform? Uh, diode ho gaya, load voltage uh, jo ho gaya aapki, that will be basically in the first interval it will be reducing in the second interval it will be rising because the inductor will be dumping energy into the capacitor rising and falling aap assume kar sakte ho ripple free approximation to aap i naught ko constant bhi maan ke chal sakte ho aur i naught aur il ki combination se il minus i naught on minus i naught that's how you will get capacitor current try to draw that waveform also it is minus i naught in the first interval and then il minus i naught in the second interval so you can also draw the capacitor current and if you want to draw the source current which is idc it will look like il when the switch is on and it will abruptly fall to zero in the second interval then again it will look like il then abruptly fall to zero such that such that its average of the input current of the input dc current its average is equal to d times i naught 1 minus d and the average of this inductor current is i naught 1 minus d where i naught you have assumed it to be constant that is your ripple free approximation so this was about the waveforms now let's quickly um, design the inductance and capacitance of the converter so for designing the inductance The governing equation is L di by dt is equal to VL. We know voltage across the inductor is VDC in the interval 0 to dTS and the net change in inductor current in this interval as inductor current rises is the that is a peak to peak ripple is delta IL lower peak to higher peak. So this is delta IL. Now the inductor will be designed as VDC times DTS upon delta IL. I have previously told you that the inductor is generally designed in terms of percentage ripple that is 2% ripple in inductor current, 1% ripple in inductor current. So you will generally not be given the value of delta IL but the value of delta IL upon IL. So we want this equation to be manipulated a bit so we can write it in, in terms of uh, delta IL upon IL. I can write this particular equation VDC D times uh, VDC into D. I can write this say this is V naught is equal to D times VDC 1 minus D. This is my standard bug boost converter equation. I can write DVDC as V naught into 1 minus D. So I can write this as V naught into 1 minus D TS delta IL. Now V naught is equal to I naught into R. And I know from capacitor current second balance that I naught IL is a boosted version of the load current I naught. So I can write this I naught as IL into 1 minus D. So here 1 minus D whole square ho gaya. TS and this is delta IL upon IL if I remove this. So this is the design equation for my inductor. There is a square over here, okay? Yani ki jitna chhota ripple mujhe chahiye, utna bada inductance mujhe use karni hai. Aur agar mein chahun ki mein inductance zyada badi na use karun, then I will have to increase the switching frequency because it will give you a, an inverse relationship. Greater the switching frequency, smaller will be the size of your L for a given amount of ripple. Right? So it is a universal thing for all DC to DC converters that a higher switching frequency reduces the size of your passives. That is essentially why higher switching frequency is necessary. It has not been violated. This rule has not been violated in the de design of LNC for any converter. We buck seen buck, boost, mein dekha, they always have an inverse relationship. So all higher switching frequencies are always beneficial in this sense. 
so this was about the design of L. Now let's quickly do the design of C. Yeah. So uh, moving on to the design of capacitor. It is dictated by C D V by D T is equal to voltage across capacitor sorry current through the capacitor right now agar hum, I might need to redraw the bug boost converter circuit uh, it's beneficial to take the interval 0 to DTS because that time the capacitor current is equal to the load current in magnitude reverse in direction so I can take the capacitor current as equal to the uh, to I naught in the interval DTS. This is C. And how much did the, does the capacitor voltage change? It is falling obviously. So it falls from one peak to another. So peak to peak ripple in the capacitor voltage or the load voltage because it's essentially the same voltage. So delta V naught. So C I can write as V naught upon R. I naught ko V naught upon R liklia into DTS divided by delta V naught. Is V naught ko yaha leke aage? Very simple equation. DTS upon R times delta V naught upon V naught. Jitna chota ripple chahiye, utna bada capacitor banana padega. Aur agar aapko zyada capacitance use nahi karni hai, kam ripple lene ke liye, to switching frequency ko bada do. Increase your switching frequency, your capacitance size will decrease. So this was about your bug boost converter, its waveforms in CCM, the volt second balance, the current second balance uh, and uh, finally the design of L and C. In the next lecture we will move to discontinuous conduction mode, uh, boundary condition and non-ideal behavior. So with that we will hopefully inshallah finish um, bug boost and bug boost converters.